So the first thing to know about Python is that it was created by a guy named Guido, Guido Van Rossum. And if you look up Guido Van Rossum on Wikipedia, you're going to find an entry that looks like this, where it's a picture of Guido Van Rossum at Google. He's now since gone on to work at uh, Dropbox. Um, but essentially, he was um, kind of looking for a hobby project in 1989, um, and he ended up creating a programming language in his spare time, and he called it Python. And if you look at some of the reasons that he created Python, you're going to see um, that he created it to be an interpreted language. Now, it's interpreted a little bit differently than you would interpret, say, like a MATLAB program where it goes line by line. It's actually slightly compiled into bytecode, and then it's interpreted from the bytecode level. However, he also created it to be a scripting language, meaning that you could just run it from a terminal if you wanted to, um, or run it from many different places. You didn't have to create a compiled file to be able to run it. He created it originally for hackers, people that just wanted to try things out in a programming language that was very easy to use. And lastly, he named Python after Monty Python's Flying Circus, not the snake. So Python in general, um, it appears in every single programming top 10 list. And uh, so I want to motivate why you would want to learn Python. Um, as a programming language. And this becomes less and less of actually a needed example to do. However, it's good to go through how popular Python is and why we're actually using it and learning it. So it appears in Hacker News, Dice Jobs List, Book Sales, all of these uh, kind of metrics that you have. Python is either number one or sometimes number two in all of these top 10 lists. It's a very, very popular programming language that you probably should know. But maybe the best way to use this is actually a visualization. If we were to visualize, let's say, the number of tags on Stack Overflow um, for a programming language versus the number of GitHub projects that a programming language has, you consistently see Python in the top right corner. It doesn't matter when you take this visualization. It keeps pushing further and further right, which pushes it as popularity as things like C++, Objective-C, PHP, Java, JavaScript, and Ruby, Python is just as popular as those programming languages. So let's talk about a few of the disclaimers for using Python. Um, Python is built on this idea of batteries included. And what that means is that they try to, when you download and install Python, hopefully everything that you need as a programmer to get started to do all of the basics of programming are already included as packages that you can import and use immediately things you would want to do with the operating systems with files um, with uh, creating http requests all of that is really just built into the programming language you simply have to import a package that already exists comes batteries included and use it another thing is the types of variables now while python uses variables that do have types they're either doubles or floats or integers or strings, all of those are weakly typed, which means that they're dynamic. You can change, uh, let's say, a variable that was a float to an integer on the fly or to a string on the fly, and it, it doesn't care. That's allowed. And that's becoming more and more popular in a lot of different programming languages. Since it's an interpreted language, um, loops are a little bit slow until they're not, until you actually compile the code. So there are lots of different um, compilers that you can use on top of Python code to actually get it to run a lot faster. Um, but natively, if you just run it, it's not compiled. It can't do parallel instructions natively, which means um, that it can't sit there and you spawn off multiple threads without installing some additional packages um, or are using packages that um, you might have to get from a third party. Now, that's okay because there are some really, really popular um, uh, parallel programming um, packages that you can install that do work out of the box um, and that many, many, many developers use and are open source. And finally, um, Python can really be the glue for a lot of different code bases. I have combined many different projects that were written in C++, C Sharp, Java, JavaScript, all into one thing unified by using Python language as the glue to help all of those programming languages interact with one another. So let's talk about the three different Python releases that exist. Um, Python 1, which you'll almost never see, was, was a very basic introduction that Guido Van Rossum um, kind of pushed out. It was developed up to uh, 1.6, and it covers things like basic Python. It used complex numbers. It used this type of um, function definition called lambdas. Um, and it, you know, it, it helped spawn the popularity of Python. But Python didn't really take off uh, until it came to Python 2, which made all the different unified types. They unified floats and doubles and integers, and they really put strings together such that you could use strings without all of these different third-party packages. And they really made the whole language object-oriented. Um, 
So if you know C++, you know Java, you're already familiar with objective-oriented programming. Um, and so Python 2.0, starting with that, it's completely object-oriented. Right? Um, Python 2, you'll still see it used today. However, it's really the beginning of the end for Python 2. There's been a big push in the community to get rid of the use of Python 2. And while that's still going to take quite a long time to get rid of Python 2, um, uh, essentially, I think you'll see it phased out here within the next five to ten years, right? So probably by the year 2020, almost everything will be written in Python 3 except for some of the legacy code. Um, but Python 2 is going to be, it's going to go the way of things like Pascal and Fortran. Python 3, still actively developed today. Um, it eliminated a lot of the multiple paradigms. There were multiple ways of doing things in Python 2, which from a programming language perspective might not be a good thing. They eliminate a lot of that. They unified the way that they did object-oriented programming in Python 3, and they simplified it. Um, however, by doing that and, and unifying the way that functions were called and, and how you could do things, Python 2 was not compatible with Python 3. So Python 3 was not didn't have backwards compatibility. That's why you still see actively developed Python 2 um, versions. Okay. If you want to install Python, if you're running Mac or Linux, you don't have to do anything. It's already installed. Python comes shipped. A lot of the um, operating system and service packages and things they use actually just use Python in the background. So you open a terminal, you do nothing. It's shipped with it. However, that's probably, on a Mac at least, it's Python 2 that's installed. So you'll probably still want to install Python 3. So if you're running Windows, Mac, or Linux, I would recommend going to python.org and getting Python 3 installed onto your system. Right? Um, there's actually a really good uh, distribution of Python 3 um, by the company called Continuum Analytics, and they release a version of Python under Anaconda. So if you go to, if you just Google for Anaconda or go to anaconda.org, you'll be able to download a version of Python that has a lot of package management and a lot of environments that you can set up so you don't have to install Python everywhere on your system. All of that's really done for you in a nice kind of subsumed way so you don't have to know too much to get it up and running. Um, and it works very quickly. It works on most operating systems. So I would really recommend if you're going to install um, Python to do it through the Anaconda distribution, although you don't have to, but it'll probably make your life easier. Um, after you've installed Python, you're going to want to access different packages. There's lots of third-party packages that you use with Python, and um, once you've installed it, you can use package managers, things like Anaconda and PIP, where you can download a lot of the different packages by just saying something like conda install the name of the package or pip install the name of the package and they really just work right off the bat after you've installed them um, you can just say you know something like import whatever the package name is um, and so as long as it's been registered on the pip or conda system it's good to go